Hi guys, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. Thanks for joining us today. I am Alana and I am here with my great friend and your Praying Christian Women podcast co-host, Jamie Hampton. We're so glad to be back. We took the summer off. You guys might not have noticed it because by God's provision, we were able to get uh, episodes up early, but this is our first episode we're recording in months. So Jamie, it's super fun to be back. And how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. And actually, to go along with that idea of our hiatus, I guess, or sabbatical, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it from recording. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's um, call it a sabbatical because that makes it sound like way more spiritual. And like we're academic. And holy. You know? We're mm-hmm. spiritual, holy academics who exactly. went on a planned sabbatical. <laughs> it's not that we're busy moms. <laughs> no, nothing like that. Nothing about having kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. But along those lines, I, I just really feel blessed because I guess it it probably went mostly unnoticed by our listeners, but if you did notice, if you're a regular listener and you love getting the podcast on Mondays when it typically comes out like 2 a.m. on Monday mornings, um, there were- You have to set your alarm to be up right at that time. Like that's that's a big sacrifice. I suffer greatly every (laughs) No, don't worry guys. This is automated. (laughs) (laughs) But it is. So I typically, you know- record we record in it but in batches we Mm -hmm. edit in batches we get them up ahead of time but over the summer I have to confess I got a little bit sloppy and lazy or maybe just busy but we'll call it sloppy and lazy I'll take it on myself with getting everything recorded and up way in advance like we typically do and um, they were recorded but they were on my computer and so over the summer I got lazy also with the backups that get done to keep them safe and in a place where if something happens to the computer, they're okay. Well, Mm -hmm. my computer crashed and it was according to the person that retrieved the data, which is part of my praise. um, It probably had something to do with the computer. It was an iMac, huge iMac, and it went crashing to the ground during our November of 2018 earthquake. And the failure was a physical hard drive failure, like a mechanical failure Mm, to mm -hmm. do what it needed to do. Um, So I was pretty devastated and I was um, just basically had gotten behind where I was uploading week by week instead of, you know, waiting and doing the batch uploads. Right. I went to see if I could get the data retrieved and he said, this does not look good. It doesn't sound good. Um, It was making these clunking grinding sounds. And he said, it's a mechanical failure. We're going to just have to see. So I left it with the guy. He had to put the hard drive in the freezer. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Because there's like, you know, nano distance between whatever the thing is. And I don't know the terminology, but basically where the hard drive itself is seated and where the reader is it's it's like Mm -hmm. nano nano space and so putting it in the freezer shrinks everything just enough that if something is locked up it it frees it up to read again so he had to do that multiple times and he was able to retrieve almost all of the data from the computer and he told me he said i'm looking over my notes and and this is you know really highly unlikely that you would have gotten anything out of here you know i got really lucky and i said well you had a little help. I said, I think it's a miracle. Right. We were praying really hard. <laughs> we were, I was, you guys, Jamie's got this really funny text habit. So anytime I get like five to 12 dings in a row. Oh no. Yes. It's like, oh yeah, Jamie's texting you again. Cause like they always come in these like <laughs> paragraph chunks. And, and so, yeah, I was getting the second by second updates on the hard drive issue. And yes, was, I'm sorry. I will tell you guys listening. It was intense. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but, but by yeah, God's praise grace, God. We got all the data. It was amazing. Yes. Well, and I came to terms with the fact that I made a poor choice. I, I, I know that there are consequences to our actions. So God didn't have to rescue me. It's kind of like, you know, failure mm-hmm. to plan on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on God's part. But by the grace of God, I just felt like I got a glimpse of total undeserved grace that those files were all recovered. We were able to finish the summer with only a few delays as opposed to having to re-record a ton of episodes, including the episode 
where we interviewed Leslie Strobel, which was right. I know you, you were know, especially worried about that one. Yeah. Right. I mean, I had to. So we, if you guys haven't listened to that episode yet, like Jamie probably lost some sleep over that one. So, you know, just to, to make her anxiety worth her while, you really do need to go back and listen. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> So how about you? How have you been doing, Alana? Good. Yeah. So again, it's fun to be back over the summer. We had just a crazy heat spell, which for those of you listening, like in areas where it actually gets hot in the summer, you'll laugh at us. But <laughs> like we had two weeks where it was like consistently getting up to 80, which is really unheard of. You know, no one around here has air conditioning. And then we were getting these really bad wildfires. So it was just kind of um, just in terms of like, weather and even like health and safety kinds of things it was a little bit intense at times my parents were going to come visit and ended up canceling because the wildfires were so close to us and i mean it was it was more than just oh yeah it's raining i guess i'll have to stay in kind of weather yeah it was very it was it was very intense as far as the fires go and i think you know having lived in arizona and las vegas um i know that 80 degrees doesn't sound that hot, but it's a different kind of heat here. And it's also different because there is no air conditioning in most places. So, I mean, it well, our house and was unbearable. Yeah, it is. And we're so far north mm -hmm. that they, um, I mean, basically like we're literally closer to the sun mm -hmm. and we never get high noon like the right. sun's always, it's, it's never high in the sky. And so it's always shining on you full body, you know, like picture yourself standing in front of a heat lamp that's pointed down at your head where the top of your head gets hot versus, you know, like a heat lamp shining on your entire body, you know, like perpendicular to you. It's, it's for sure. Um, yeah, it tested our Alaskan endurance for sure. It did. But you know, we stayed relatively healthy. Oh, here's a praise, Jamie, that I haven't even told you about. It looks as if we've done a couple itty bitty tests and it looks as if my son's wheat allergies might be not nearly as severe as they once were. Oh, so that's we're kind great. of, yeah, I mean, this is years of, I mean, intense stomach trouble and some pretty severe dietary restrictions um, aside from just the wheat. And it looks like we're, you know, we're slowly reintroducing things and so far it's going well. So that, yeah, that's another really exciting praise on this oh, end. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's new with you just in terms of like moving forward into the fall? What's something that you're excited about or looking forward to? Oh, I know. I'm going to spoil it. I'm going to answer the question for you. You've got three in school now. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that seems to be going well, I assume. It does. I mean, we had some in the beginning of the year, we had, you know, my daughter just started kindergarten. And just as we felt like we had gotten through the hurdle of, is she going to be okay? Is she going to like it? Is she going to cry? Is she going to adjust? She loved it. She was doing well. She was making friends. And then we had a classroom switch and not just a classroom switch. She switched to the Japanese immersion program in our neighborhood school, which is a huge transition. And it's too long a story to talk about, but it was not expected. We didn't have time to think about it, but mm -hmm. she's that was another great. day where I was getting, yeah, like a dozen bing, bing. And I, I, I love to pick it. on you about that, but it's like, I love hearing from you. So don't feel bad. I just think it's so funny. Bing. Well, it bing. is. And I think sometimes after I've written my long conversations, I think, oh no, I forgot to break it up into, because there for a while I was uh -huh. doing a good job of breaking it up into little chunks that I knew right. would still come, but at least they would come in order. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only problem is every once in a while, it, and this hasn't happened in like a year or two, but yeah, every once in a while, like it would be like a jigsaw puzzle, <laughs> you know, like here's 12 sentences in, they come like not in the order that you type them in. So I need to like, it's, it's almost like I need to print them out, cut them into strips of paper. And, I'm trying you know, to keep like, you on your toes right. here. I'm just trying That's to right. keep you mentally You are alert. keeping my brain mentally sharp. I will never have to worry about dementia. I am all set. So thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's dive into our show. Like, it's super fun to just kind of be back. And um, I guess we can call this our welcome back to, to you and me and also welcome back to our listeners. And we're going to start off with a coffee break question. So quick reminder, these are questions that you guys send in and they just lead to interesting discussions on our episodes. So what's our What's our link for that? It's prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions, I believe. Does that sound right to you? 
Yes. And so you can okay. send in your own prayer related question that you would like to have discussed on the air. So today we have two questions. One's very specific and one's broader, but they both kind of relate to, you know, praying through hard things. So uh, how do you want to take it, Jamie? Do you want to open with prayer? Do you want to read the questions? Do you want to just dive right in? Where should we begin? We There's can... one right answer. I know. I need to pick just the right one. I think we should open <laughs> with prayer and then introduce the question, which is always well, awkward because when I pray, I usually give like- You introduce the question. I know. Oh God, we need to do an entire, question. yeah, we need an entire episode on spoiler-free praying, like how to pray without spoiling what you're going to be talking about. Yes. I need to do more research before I'm ready for that one though. Every once in a while, I think it's so funny because, you know, Jamie and I are prayer partners and we've been doing that together <laughs> long before the, the podcast. And so every once in a while, we really will do that. We'll be like, this is totally hypothetical, but like, we'll be on the phone praying and I'll be like, and God, thank you so much for that conversation I had with Sally. And I haven't had a chance to tell Jamie about it yet, but it went really, really well. And I'm, I'm feeling good about it. So just thanks for that. And please let Jamie know that I'm thankful for her prayers. And that's, I mean, really, it's not quite that extreme, but every once in a while we do dive into the, um, what would you call that? Like a, I don't know. It's like you know, informative, you know, interjection in prayer, like, I don't know, interject interjecting information into a prayer. Okay. Well, I'm here. Let's open in prayer. We had a little technical difficulty there, but um, yeah, let's open up in prayer. God, we just thank you for this opportunity to jump back into praying Christian women. Um, we just thank you that you're all around us, Lord, that you're giving us opportunities to talk about these difficult subjects. And I just pray, Father, as we get into these important and kind of deep coffee break questions today, that you would give us wisdom as we speak, that you would just put a Holy Spirit guard on our mouths and that you would allow us to be encouraging and that you would just help us to speak directly to these women who have shared their hearts with us and, and offer them something that will encourage them and, and others listening to God. Um, just be glorified in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So like we said, we have a <clears throat> very specific question and then also a more broad question. So I'm going to start with Kim's question, which is the more broad one. And it's super interesting just from the kind of the intellectual level. So I'm really curious to dive into this discussion with you, Jamie. But Kim asks, why do we go through hard things in this life on earth to be transformed if we're all without sin in heaven? How does my life here transfer to my life there? How should I pray about this? Does our transformation, if it occurs, into more of Christ's image here, transfer our life in heaven as in this? So I think if I were going to sum this up, I what I'm reading in Kim's question is, okay, I've been told that when we go through trials, it's so we can become more like Christ. But what's the point if once we get to heaven, we're going to be as sinless as we ever can be anyway? Is that kind of how you read the question? Yes, it is. It's super interesting. So before we dive into that, though, um, we kind of wanted to couple these two questions together because Nancy's is a lot more specific, but it also addresses just this idea of, yeah, we live with hard things. So Nancy says, how do you pray when you find out you are carrying a Down syndrome child um, or any defect? So I kind of wanted to start with Nancy's, Jamie, if that's okay, and just give yeah. a little bit of... Um, of my two cents. So I've talked about it before on the show. So if you're a long time listener, this isn't a surprise, but my middle son Silas stopped breathing 90 minutes after he was born and was without oxygen for at least 10 minutes and was very severely <clears throat> um, brain damaged because of that. When Jamie and I met, I think he must've been about three or four and he was still on a feeding tube. I forget, Jamie, were you one of our babysitters who actually learned how to use the tube? I knew that no. I know we had one or two friends. Okay. I don't think uh, I did. Yeah. But, you know, thankfully he's, what is he? He's about to turn 12. He's been incredibly healthy. He still has a few like speech and gross motor delays, but intellectually is, I mean, just insanely genius in a lot of ways and he's doing great. So all that to say, it's a little different than finding out that you're carrying a child with a major life-changing illness, but I can definitely, um, 
you know, kind of empathize with the thought of raising a medically fragile baby. Um, in terms of how you pray for that, that's a really hard one because on the one hand, you do want to pray for health and healing and miracles, but you're also kind of like, I know for times with Silas, I really truly believed that God was going to heal him. I had the time frame totally wrong. Like if, if we were recording this 10 years ago, I probably would have said, definitively like I believe with all my heart that Silas is going to be off his feeding tube and eating normally by the time he's three and that didn't happen he got off his tube at the age of six which I mean still is now half a lifetime ago I you know I go days without thinking about the fact that he was tube fed but I had this thing where yes I believed that he was going to be healed I knew God could heal him I truly truly believed in my heart that God promised a healing to him but I also had to keep my feet grounded in reality Um, And that reality was my child might die. My child might be severely delayed. My child might never eat. And so it it really was, um, I felt like sometimes it was almost like there were two sides of me. There was the mom who always kept hoping and wishing and praying and firmly believing for the best to the point where like we didn't even, we were very careful about the way we talked about Silas's health and like cognitive abilities and things like that because like I <clears throat> I treated him as if he could and I mean I did this with all of our babies you know even before yes they they did not understand human language at two months but I would speak to them as if they did you know mm-hmm. and and I would speak about them as if they did so like if I'm holding my four-year-old whether he was Silas or one of Silas's brothers I'm not going to be talking to Jamie about how tired I am of this kid who just won't stop crying at night. Cause right. you know, like I just kind of went into it with this idea of words have power. I do not want to say words. If my child could understand everything I was saying would, you know, hurt them or damage them or, or anything like that. So we were really like in that side of things, I was super careful about how I talked about Silas, how I talked to Silas, how I believed in Silas's eventual healing. But I also knew like, okay, we're back to the hospital or okay, we're back to, you know, like a dozen medical appointments a week. Like that was our life for years. Um, So how do you pray when you're finding out that you're carrying a child with a disability? I would just say, um, be be as totally open and honest as you can. Like this isn't the time for you to act as though God's given you a test that you need to pass by being 100% faithful and say exactly the right thing. Mm-hmm. Like this is a time for your emotions to be all over the place and for you to just be as raw and open and vulnerable with the Lord as possible. I think that's really good advice because I think the temptation would be okay, this is how I'm supposed to be praying right now. I Mm -hmm. have to pray this way. And it does prevent you from being real with God. So, you know, I I think it would be important in that time to maybe keep a journal Mm -hmm. and pray through journaling or, you know, to be more conversational or if you're not comfortable journaling, just, but to pray conversationally. Yeah. Yeah. And not censoring. Another thing, you know, if Nancy, you just wanted a few practical things and, and you're welcome to reach out to me personally. I I almost feel like we're a little delayed in getting this coffee break out. So it's even possible, like if if this truly is what you're walking through right now, it's, it's perhaps even possible that, you know, the prayers have switched to I'm pregnant with a Down syndrome child or a child with a defect who now I'm raising one. But right. the practical prayers in that situation, I would say, are um, prayers for you and your marriage. It's for sure mm-hmm. just stressful. Prayers for bonding, because that was really, that did not come naturally to Silas and me, because he was in the NICU for six or seven weeks, and bonding did not go according to the schedule of how it would, you know, if I had popped him out and taken him home that day or something. Um, another just practical and logistical thing to be praying for is just that God would surround you with the absolute best medical professionals around. Um, that includes, you know, therapists. And I know that Silas's progress, yes, it's miraculous, but it's also a lot of it is God's miracles being performed through the hands of like early intervention therapists and things like that. So prayers for God to just send you absolutely the right people and keep you from the wrong people because we've had a couple and thankfully not, not too many, but a a few scenarios where there were people 
intimately involved in my child's care that I was not comfortable with. And so those are scenarios where you also just need to go in with prayer and discernment and things like that. I think that totally covers it. Um, that, that was excellent. Cause I, I looked at this question and I thought, wow, I'm, I have no idea. So thank you for so thoroughly yeah. covering those. I love oh, it. Yeah. Well, and I've got, a have got a pop quiz for you, Jamie, and it's the, how well do you know Alana quiz? Uh -oh. If I were to ask you who my favorite Christian band is, would you know the answer? Is it Selah? It is. Okay. Yay. yay. <laughs> so the main singers, um, he and his wife, had a pregnancy where the child was not expected to live at all. And she wrote a memoir about that called I Will Carry You. I also, you know, this is so bad. I wrote a book about it as well, like a novel where it's about a mom carrying a baby with a very severe diagnosis. I don't remember the name of that novel right now. Like I'm to the point where I have too many out. <laughs> um, I'll try to remember that and get the name to you of oh. that by the end of the episode. But the one by, um, the wife of the lead singer of Sailor is called I Will Carry You. And that was for sure just inspiring, encouraging, sad. I mean, crazy sad and hard to read, but still um, a neat story of how God carried another family through something similar. Wasn't Tiff the mom in your novel? You know what? I guess I have two stories like that, don't I? That's the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> okay, so that mama. one, yes, that is Beauty from Ashes, right. and that Beauty is about Ashes. a NICU baby. Right. Um, that one more specific about um, the pregnancy itself. I don't know if you've oh, read that one, Jane. I don't yeah. think I read that one. Um, it's in one of the Crossroad collections. I'm going to remember the name by the end of the episode, and we'll get back to it. But let's okay. um, let's dive into Kim's question now. Yes. So yeah, Kim's question, I think just on kind of a, like you said, an academic theological level is very interesting. And, you know, just as a disclaimer that we give all the time, we are not theologians. We read the Bible. We love the Bible, but we are not, we have not studied this topic in, you know, my we like detail. To take, yeah, we like to take these things and go, wow, what a good question. Yes. And then just chat about it some. Right. So um, just to say, you know, yeah. what we say is opinion and, and we would like to bring scripture into it also, but it's right. a discussion. So we would love to hear from you listening, what you think about this. So definitely either email us or you can put comments down, you know, wherever you're listening, whether it's iTunes or Libsyn, you can add comments to the discussion because we would love to hear some of your thoughts on this question. Yeah. So again, just to rephrase Kim's question, it's if bad things happen to us so that we can become more like Christ, then what's the point if we're going to be like Christ in heaven anyway? So the first thing that came to my mind, there were, there were a few. So I think maybe the first thing to talk about is the the word sanctification because what she's talking about is this idea of being made more like jesus in this lifetime would you agree that that's kind of the yeah. concept that well, she's referring it's, to yes it's also i think important to make the distinction between sanctification and glorification right. um and so this is kind of the theology nerd vocab lesson but sanctification is the ongoing process of becoming more and more holy in the way that we live while we're here on earth glorification happens when we die and are no longer bound by sin in any way so <clears throat> yes the end goal is that we are going to die or jesus is going to return and we are going to be sinless in heaven but we still have a goal and an obligation and an opportunity to work out our sanctification while we're here on earth. And so I almost, the reason why this question was so interesting for me, just from the intellectual side of it, is because I never really put these two concepts together. Like in my mind, my job here on earth is to become more and more like Jesus and get more and more people into heaven if I can. And then, you know, one day I'm going to wake up in heaven and not have to worry about all the mistakes that I made while I was here on earth, you know, like, mm -hmm. so I don't, um, so I, I see this. So here's something. Kim, to just address the, um, almost what I see is the heart question. The heart question is, why do we have to go through hard things just mm -hmm. to be made like God? If one day I'm going to die and, and be with him and live in a sinless, perfect world anyway. I think that 
the heart of that question is, A, because sin exists and we're not in heaven yet. I mean, that's kind of the glib response. But, you know, B, I think we go through these hard times so that God can show us his amazing grace. Like we're, once we get to heaven, we're going to see God's glory and his power and his awesomeness and his majesty in ways that we can't even begin to fathom. But his grace, I feel like we experience here on earth because by the time we're in heaven, like we're not going to need his forgiveness anymore, right? I mean, I kind of think it is a one and done thing. We die, we don't have a sin nature anymore. So it's not as though we're going to ongoingly, I don't think that's in the word, but let's make it a word. We're not going to ongoingly mm -hmm. be experiencing God's grace firsthand in heaven. It's kind of like, um, what's that quote that you, you always attribute it to me? And I'm always like, well, no, that actually wasn't me, but I'm probably the one who said it to you about how like in heaven, no, no, no. It's, it's only on earth that we have the opportunity to worship God through difficulties. Right. right? Yeah. How, how would you paraphrase that? Because I think actually you do a better job paraphrasing it. Well, now I'm on the spot, but I think um, it's so we have the privilege on earth of, of going through trials and going through difficulties and being able to, to praise God, even in the midst of it. Um, yeah. And we're not going to have that chance. And we're not going to have that chance in heaven, in heaven. Because it is going to be perfect there. Yeah. And, and there is so much power in that act of praise, even when things are hard. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this scripture, you know, second Peter three eighteen, because we listed a few scriptures here in our notes to kind of pull from as we go. But um, it says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. And that kind of goes back to what you're saying about growing in the grace, which, I mean, you could look at that as that word itself in the grace, the undeserved blessing and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we grow through those trials. The Bible talks many times about understanding through our own sufferings, the extent of his suffering and the extent of the gift that's been given to us, because without those trials and without the fight against sin, we would never understand, I don't think, the extent of what was given to us. And we wouldn't and that results in love for God. So it actually grows our love for God. So I don't know, that just, that verse, when you were talking about grace and, and understanding that, that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to, um, I've got this analogy in my head and I'm trying to decide if I want to go with it. Give me a second. Because <laughs> yeah. like, I like the analogy. I'm just not sure that, um, okay. I've already started. I may as well dive in. We'll you can't uh, cut hold it back out now. <laughs> I can't hold back now. And here we go, just saying that we will make the decision to cut this out if we decide to. And um, we'll never I know. I want to draw an analogy between the intimacy within a marriage. So let's have that serve as a warning to you if if you've got itsy bitsy listeners around or something. I will not be graphic for sure, but that's the analogy that I want to draw from. So I'm looking at Kim's question and her question kind of to me is, okay, I know once I get to heaven, everything's going to be perfect. So why, like, why, why do we strive on earth anyway? Right. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of see it, you know, and I mean, it's, it's not a stretch because the Bible uses the analogy of, you know, like the new heaven and new earth being like a bride, you know, the return of Christ being like the groom coming for his bride, you know, so we're, we're kind of, we're betrothed to Christ right now as, mm -hmm. you know, as the body, this, this, so far we're, we're still on analogies that come straight out of scripture. So if you think about the physical relationship between a man and a woman during the engagement period, um, in a scenario where everybody is following biblical standards of purity, then it's going to look very different, right? The betrothal period is not the same as what comes after the wedding. Now, for us, the analogy is what comes after the wedding isn't until we get to heaven. But I almost feel like this question, to, to draw it to a sort of um, ridiculous extreme, <laughs> It's almost like, okay, if I'm going to sleep with my husband on our wedding night, 
then why would I want to like give him a kiss now? D do you kind of get what I'm saying? Or is it just a stupid, stupid, stupid analogy? No, I know what you're saying. So you're okay. saying, right. No, I understand. Right. So our relationship with Christ is for sure not what it's going to be once we get to heaven. But that still doesn't mean that we can't enjoy an amazing relationship with him now. Like I look back mm -hmm. to my engagement period, like there was something really special about that time, right? That no, I would never like give up what I have now to go back to that, but it still was incredibly special. I wouldn't have wanted to skip that stage, you know, for anything. And so I kind of see that as where we are now. Yes, what we have to look forward to is so much better than what we can experience here. But what we can experience here in terms of just being close to the Lord still is pretty amazing. And sometimes that intimacy gets fostered when God does carry us through these hard times. And I also feel like um, if, and I'm making an assumption that when we do get to heaven, that we will retain the knowledge of our time on earth. And with that assumption and kind of going back to that engagement analogy, having gone through the time of, you know, like in reality, waiting to have a sexual intimacy until marriage is a little bit of suffering, you know, I mean, that is suffering because you have to use self-control. Mm -hmm. There are times when you would probably like to go to that level, you know, and mm -hmm. have to refrain. So that is kind of, but when you actually can, that waiting and that preparation time kind of sets the stage for, wow, now this is what we have. And so I wonder if part of that time on earth is providing a contrast so that when we do live right. sinless, when we do have that heavy weight of flesh mm -hmm. off and gone, that we have that contrast and we can say, oh, wow, this is incredible. This is what really good point. Yeah. So I don't know. And I'm, I'm not, you know, but what it does remind me of is, and I, I don't know if I'm using this totally in context. It's the way that I've come to understand it, but I'm totally open to correction or anyone that would like to discuss it further. But in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15, it says, I'm just going to read it straight from the NIV. It says, by the grace God has given me, and this is Paul speaking to the church, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day with a capital D will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. And what I have always attributed this scripture for it's talking about the gospel obviously and truth but i believe it's talking about our faith in general maybe where it talks about you know paul laid a foundation so the foundation is faith in jesus christ that person even if they only have that foundation will be saved and so that to me means that they will be absolved of their sins and they will exist in heaven but it says, even though only as one escaping through the flames, and it, it goes back to storing up treasures in heaven or using the wrong things to build on the foundation of the gospel, whether it's false doctrine or misguided intentions, or maybe it's going along with um, going through trials and giving up rather than pressing into God, where it talks about let endurance or perseverance have its full effect that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Maybe it's if you're not going through these trials, living the abundance that God wants for you and having joy in those things and seeing God work through those things and reveal himself in those situations, that there will be something when we get to heaven that will be missing that could have been added to our spirit. And I don't know that for sure. So I, I, and that's a lot of speculation, but I think the bottom line is there will be something missing. You know, when the Bible says in, and I don't have the verse to reference, but you know, let, let perseverance, when you face trials, let perseverance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything, which tells me that something is lacking or missing when we don't, 
allow the trials to transform us and don't allow the trials mm-hmm. to make us grow, grow closer to God. I don't know what right. that looks like, but it just scripture, these different scriptures where, you know, seeking treasures in heaven, first Corinthians six, 19 through 21, the, they all seem to point to some kind of benefit in the eternal realm. And I can't Mm -hmm. say what that might be, but it just, I'm not saying that we're going to, you know, get physical gifts or that we're going to get a literal crown on our head. Um, But maybe it's just people that are brought into the kingdom, but it just seems that God is blessing us in ways that we couldn't or wouldn't be blessed without the trials, without the difficulties. And so those trials are actually being used to make us better off in the end. Mm-hmm. And I, I would know. say <clears throat> in the end here on earth, as well as in heaven, I agree. You know, there are for sure physical, I'm mean, not physical, like earthly benefits yes. to trusting in God through difficulties. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Got this bug in my throat, but no. yeah, there's, you know, different thoughts about what treasures in heaven truly mean. You know, some people really do think the more, the more good deeds you do, the Bigger your house will be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I mean, the New Testament sort of uses languages like that, you know, but I know some people don't like that mindset because it, you know, it doesn't necessarily seem fair or it's, it, I think the argument could be like, well, if heaven's going to be perfect, how can it be more perfect for some people than others? Who right. knows? I mean, we're not going to be lacking anything in heaven, but I, I do feel like there's going to be some kind of degree of reward based on, like you said, how we persevere, how we trust, how that works. I, I'm going to just assume that God's going to work all that, all those details out and I don't mm-hmm. need to know right now, but I think for sure it gives us encouragement through those hard times. Mm-hmm. Well, and our listener asks, how do I pray about this? You know, um, she asks, how do we, how do we pray about this? Um, and it's Kim. I, I lost her name there. So I'm like, our listener. Our Sorry. listener. Sorry, Hi, Kim. Kim. Hi. Um, well, I've got the uh, the selfish prayer for it. And then the, um, this is probably a better way to pray. But I know oh, I like, like it. When I was in the NICU with Silas, I remember vividly praying. Um, and he's our middle son. And so when I was pregnant with our youngest, I was so scared of a repeat performance. You know, I was right. so scared that we'd be back in the NICU going through all of that again. Um, and my prayer, this is my kind of like half funny, half selfish, but a hundred percent genuine prayer. It was God. I really hope I learned all the lessons that I needed to learn because I don't want to go through this again. (laughs) And you know, like, I I think that's okay. Like, Hey God, if I'm going to have to walk through this horrible trial, please let me learn everything that I need to learn about it so that I never need to go back and repeat this grade. (laughs) You know, I could definitely see that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, kind of the um, the more censored, holier sounding kind of prayer would be through that, you know, God just teach me what I need to learn through this, use this for good, um, you know, those kinds of prayers. And But like we said before, when we opened up with Nancy's question about pregnancy and, you know, sick children and things, it's also totally fine to be raw and open and vulnerable in your prayers. Don't, don't sugarcoat your prayers because God knows the depths of your heart even better than you do. So don't, don't pray as if you're doing perfectly when your world is falling apart. Like you're allowed to let God know that your world is falling apart. <laughs> yes. And I, I also think that as you know, that the one safe, I don't know if safe is the word, but the one prayer that I feel like is always relevant is God, show me how you're showing up here, no matter where it is, like, show me who you are. And whether that's a glimpse, um, you know, like my husband is having a really bad week at work, show him, show him that you're there, whether it's one of those like God winks where he does something that only God could do, or only God would know, or whether it's the situation is really horrible, but somehow you just are able to to push through and feel joy anyway. I mean, whatever it is, I just feel like that is just always a relevant prayer to pray as we're going through these difficult times. And I think another one is praise in the midst of that, like we talked about, is just a powerful, powerful prayer as we're going through it is, I don't know why, even if you just go to God and say, I don't understand, it seems a little bit like torture that you could have just 
made us perfect and kept us that way and made us robots that just always did what we were supposed to do. That It seems like torture that we have to go through sinful lives to, to end up in heaven. But even with that, you are good, and I trust you, and I don't understand it, but I love you anyway. You are good, God. You are worthy of my praise. Like I think that's a hugely powerful prayer, even when you're in the depths of frustration. Yeah, absolutely. And one more thing, you know, this is hard when you're in the depths of a, a major intense trial. So I'm bringing it more toward the, you know, intellectual side of things. But when we look at suffering, you know, so far, we've really, we've been talking about suffering as A, a way to become more like God here on earth, or B, a way to draw closer in your walk with Christ or see, you know, maybe a way to get bigger rewards in heaven. If you do it well, truly like we suffer because God is glorified when we suffer. Like it's, it's not about us, (laughs) you know, like God brought amazing good things to our family through what we went through with Silas, but I don't think he was up there weighing the pros and cons on our behalf. I think it was Am I, like, this is God speaking, am I going to get the glory out of this? Okay, let's do it. I think we need to just bear that in mind. Yes, he is so close to the brokenhearted. He is um, mourning with us. This is, this again, one of these intellectual questions I have. I want to know your thoughts, Jamie. All right. So I went like two or three years not able to mentally revisit Silas's delivery because he was born just fine. And when he came out, he was presumably totally healthy, but he was having, I mean, insane brain hemorrhages that we just didn't know about. So we're there, we're happy as anything. His big brother is holding him. We're singing, Jesus loves me. We are like picture perfect, happiest family to be imagined. Okay. God knows that in 45 minutes, our son is going to stop breathing, nearly die, suffer extensive brain damage. It's going to take decades to heal. Mm. How is God feeling like at that moment? Is he happy that we're so happy? Is he like, oh, kiddos, if you only knew, do you know what I mean? Or is like, does he already know the end picture is going to be fine anyway? Like I, I know, yes, technically God is not bound by time, but he knows that we are. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I don't, I don't love this idea of like, God is so big and he's so outside of time that he doesn't really like, he's not with you right now at the moments because he is with me right now at the moment. And of course he's Mm -hmm. so much bigger than right now in my moments. But since I can't grasp that, I believe that God is here with me in this moment. So that's something I, um, I do question and wonder about, you know, like, and I, and I think it's kind of both like, yes, God knew that God was going to be glorified. God knew that our family was going to experience blessings as well as heartaches. Um, And I think that he has the infinite capacity to rejoice with us as well as like, I I don't know if mourn with us is the right word, but I don't know. It's just something I think about sometimes. I wouldn't think, you know, I, I feel like, like mourn could be the right word. I mean, Jesus wept over Jerusalem, you know, and and over Lazarus, even though he knew Lazarus was going to yeah right he knew the end of the story so I could totally as a parent I can't imagine that if God compares himself to a a loving father that he wouldn't mourn and maybe because he's so powerful and omniscient and omnipresent he could be in you know that moment and I almost you know as I look at that moment that you had you know or those 90 minutes before that that was kind of a gift in itself for you to have that experience before you knew. And, but, but I, I understand, I totally understand what you're saying about personally, we couldn't go through that knowing the end. It's kind of like watching a movie after you know the end of the movie, you can never rejoice in the beginning of the movie when you know the, as much as. It's absolutely true. Yeah. I mean, we, we took a video of our toddler holding his baby brother none of us have ever even watched it i think it exists somewhere oh or it did for years but yeah there's no way i mean even now i i don't even want to think about what it would be like to watch that it's yes. um yeah but anyway yeah those are all really good questions and yeah yeah this was definitely a discussion that that i'm sure a lot of people will have had questions about also yeah I that it's that this was in some way helpful <laughs> Oh, for sure. Well, you know what? How about, I know we're going to move into our prayers for the unsaved, but how about I will um, close this part of our show with a prayer for Nancy and her situation 
Um, and Nancy, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read between the lines. Like technically, Nancy has never said, I am carrying a baby with Down syndrome or something. So I don't, I don't know if this is a question based on your personal experience, or maybe you know someone going through it. So I'm, I'm going to kind of offer a vague prayer here, but I do want to pray for you and anyone else in a situation like that. And then maybe we can wrap up with our prayers for the unsaved. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right. God, we're so thankful for the chance to get back into recording. Thank you for preserving Jamie's data so that we could keep episodes going out through the summer. Thank you for our listeners. Thank you for these questions that have come in. I pray especially for Nancy and if there is a specific baby and or pregnancy on her mind and on her heart right now, God, we just pray for amazing grace and your just providence and sustenance and just that miraculous ability to persevere through these hard things. We pray this for any or other issues or everybody listening who's going through these seasons of intense pain. We just pray that you would be the one to be giving amazing encouragement and hope through whatever they're going through. And we just pray that you would kind of retroactively take our words and the discussion we just had to be working encouragement and healing to those who are hurting. Amen. Amen. Well, we are, it feels like a long time since we've done any prayers for the unsaved, but of course our listeners probably heard one a week or two ago, <laughs> but um, we are, we are also timeless just so that you guys know, speaking of, you right. know, God, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We're going to delete that. <laughs> we'll delete that oh, now. sure, sure. Well, you know, <laughs> just so everyone's listening, Jamie does the edit. So if something gets by, it's uh, it's totally her fault and it would never be my fault. <laughs> Direct your complaints to me. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> that's J-A-I-M-E. Is that Jaime? Yes, Mr. Jaime Hampton. <laughs> But yeah, so we're back to the prayers for the unsaved, which we really love. It's very near and dear to our hearts. If you, for some reason, have, if this is your first episode or, or you've just started listening, our prayers for the unsaved actually came from a very personal place where we wanted to begin revisit or, or make a renewed commitment to be praying for the unsaved people in our own lives. And so Alana and I actually made a list and it's an evolving list. It, it's gotten bigger, it's gotten shorter, you know, and, and they're not together. We individually have our lists, but we prayed that God would show us the one to three people, one to five people that, that he would have us pray for their salvation for the long haul until he removes them um, from our hearts to pray for or until they come to know the Lord. And so this is a time where we can all pray together and, and lift up those people in our lives that don't know God. And if you like these prayers, um, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved, and you can subscribe to receive one prayer each day. There are 30 of them. Um, in your inbox so that you can actually pray these exact prayers over the next 30 days and not wait until we have one on the podcast for you to pray. So um, again, that's prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved. All right, let's pray. Dear God, I confess that without your intervention, it is impossible for my friend to ever find your salvation. Please prepare their heart, Lord, so that when they hear the good news, they will respond with joy and understanding. Please send them others to share the way of salvation and allow that message to fall on good soil. I pray that my friend wouldn't only be saved, but that they would begin to share the gospel with others, that you would use them to advance your kingdom around the world. Nothing is too hard for you to do. I pray that my friend would one day be like the farmer in your parable, sowing seeds and producing a bountiful crop of souls that have been saved by your awesome grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. And again, if you have questions that you would like to hear us cover on one of our Coffee Break episodes like this, send those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. So thanks again for joining us, guys. It's really fun to be back after the summer off, and we hope that you are all having an amazing week and experiencing lots of joy and freedom in Christ.